Hello friends, a warm welcome from I, Fura Patel, to you all. Now, in the previous sessions, we discussed about the different concepts of the jurisprudence, such as the ownership, its meanings, its essentials, the subject matter, and of course the kinds. Now, in this topic, in this session, we shall be discussing and looking into the aspect of the possession. Now friends, when we were talking about the ownership, we did discuss or rather we did mention this word possession. So what do you mean by possession? As you can see on the screen, my friends, the possession literally means physical control over a thing or an object. It expresses the closest relationship of the fact that can exist between a thing and a person who is of the possession of the same thing. In law, possession means it includes not only the physical control of the things, but the intention to exercise that physical control also. The concept of the possession is, though basic and essential in human life, it is difficult to define the same concept, of course, as stated by the ownership for the ownership also. There is no fixed or precise definition of the possession because it is legal as well as factual concepts. So friends, that means that when we are talking about the concept of the possession, it means that when I, if I am having a physical control over certain objects or certain things, then that would make me having the possession of those property or those things. So if I am having that possession, that is not only requirement to fulfill the definition of the possession, I also need to have the intention to use that physical power or rather the physical control over that property. So this is the definition of the possession. Rather, we, can, we, will, we are going to have a look into the different jurists concepts and also the concept that has been given by the courts. In one of the cases of Superintendent Remembrance Legal Affairs v. Anil Kumar in 1980s, it was stated by the court that it is impossible to work out a completely logical and precise definition of the possession uniformly, which is applicable to all the situation in context of that statute. It is very difficult to define the term possession. Some jurists have given certain definitions. That means, my friend, that the court is also of the opinion that one definition of the possession cannot fit all the cases which are falling. So let's have a look at the different jurists opinion with regard to the concept of the possession. Salman has stated that the possession is the count continuing exercise of a claim to the exclusive use of an object. That means my friend that Salman is emphasizing that I need continue, continuous use or exercise of the claim to have that exclusive use of an object or rather to call it it uh, call it under the possession concept that means my friend that having that thing with me for one time is not going to survive we need to have the physical control or rather the exercise of the physical control of that property for the continuous time period according to salmon next is sevigny defines the possession as intention coupled with physical power to exclude others from the use of the material object. That means, my friends, that Sevigny is trying to state that the physical power is required when you want to prove the relationship of the possession with the object of an individual and that physical power would include the power to exclude any other person from usage of that particular thing. So that means, my friends, that if I am stating that I am, uh, I am having a possession over any of the property, then that would make me stop any other individual from using that property in which way that I am using, as according to Sevigny's definition. Coming to the next one, that is Mene opined that physical detention coupled with the intention to hold the things detained as one's own. That means, my friend, that if I am claiming that the property is under my possession and it is I am having the intention to hold that property for in under my possession for a time being which is in force. So that would prove that the ownership or uh, sorry the possession is under myself. That means my friend that when we are talking about all these things we are deriving certain elements of the possession. If you remember we did derive the elements of the ownership on the basis of the definitions that we had discussed. 
So, on the basis of all these opinions and statements and the definitions given by the jurist and the concepts, let's derive the elements of the possession. So, friends, there were many elements of the ownership when we discussed. When we are talking about the possessionship, above from above from the above definitions, we could definitely have a look that there are two main essentials, or rather two main essential elements to complete the concept of the possession. The first is called the corpus possedent possessensis, and the second is what you call the animus possedendi. What is corpus possessensis? Actual power over the object which is in possession. The next is animus possidendi. That means intention of the possessor to exclude any other interference from the other people. That means, my friends, that we have come to the conclusion of this element on the basis of all the three opinions or all the three jurists' definition that we decided or rather that we saw in the previous slide. Now, according to John Salmon, both the corpus and animus must be present to constitute the possession. That means if I am not having the physical control over a thing or if I am not having the intention to use that property to, uh, and to exclude others also, then the complete concept of the possession cannot be stated to be constituted. That means ownership is a legal concept whereas the possession is a factual concept. The term corpus and the term animus, both the terms has been borrowed from the Roman law. Friends, let's discuss one very real life example to understand this part. There is one flat. Okay, now I have bought that flat from the builder. I have given the consideration amount for the same thing. The registration is there in my name. Now, that means that I am the owner of that particular flat or property. Now, my friends, what if I want to give that flat on rent to A? So, A will be having... After the, of course, due contract and due procedure of the law, when A is having the possession of the property, that means, my friends, that A would have all the rights to use that property according to the contract and also to stop any other individual from using, from the usage of that property. That means, my friend, that A will be fulfilling both the elements of the possession, that is, actual power over the object and the intention to exclude others and the intention to use that property also okay so friends now when we have talked we are when we have talked about the elements of the possession let's move on to the next discussion so the next discussion is about the categories of the possession possession is divided into two main categories the first is possession in fact and the second is possession in law we have talked about in fact and in law of course but when we are talking about possession with regard to that concept what do you mean by that so possession in fact is actual or physical possession it is physical relation to a thing possession in law means possession in the eyes of the law it means a possession which is recognized and protected by the law there is sometimes a discrepancy between possession in fact and possession in law although usually the possession exists both in fact and in law in the same person. A person who is de facto in possession of a thing also comes to have the de jure possession. That means of course the de facto is in fact and de jure is in law. That means my friend that sometimes generally what happens is uh, the physical ownership over the physical possession of that thing and the legal recognition or the protection of that possession generally lies in one person only. There are certain very few cases where the possession in fact and possession in law is there in the conflict. At that point of time, it becomes very important to understand different kinds of the possession to determine the relationship of one over the another. So friends, let's discuss the kinds of the possession. Before I move on to the kinds of the possession, let's end this session and we shall be discussing the kinds of the possession in the next session. Till then, keep learning.